one day. Um, I didn't understand exactly why I was there. I knew I had to, I had to be there. And I walked in and introduced myself to you and tried to explain why I was there, even though I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then you, we sat down and had coffee and started talking. And then you realized why I was there. We talked for five hours. Yes, we did. We talked for a very long time. And then I understood why I was there. And I've been visiting back and forth ever since then. Mm -hmm. And it's because why you was there, that's what we're going to talk about today. The frequency, frequency, yes. OK, frequencies. Um, this is a rain stick, and it, and it can be very pleasant. This is used in Africa and South America. Like I said, it can be very pleasant, but it can be rather irritating to people whose hearing is somewhat different. Now this, this is a flute. I got that um, from the Pueblo, from the Pueblo Indian. And let me see if I can play this, so. And here was a note of a different kind. So we have flutes. Then in my opening shot, you saw the three Egyptian girls that that have uh, harps and everything. Now this is a drum from Kenya. You're familiar with this drum. Yes. This has snake skin, and it makes noises like that. Can I get you to put? Well, I get it. Like here. And then this is a talking drum from Africa. I actually learned how to play this. It's a little hard sometimes. And those are those kind of sounds. Then over here on the table if, is a sound machine that I bought when I went on my book tour. And the reason I did that was it was just too quiet where I was. And as a result of that, I needed different sounds. So I got frogs and I got uh, heartbeats. And, and things of the sorts. And that soothed me and made me feel better. So we have um, all kinds of sounds here. Like I said, they can soothe you or irritate you. Just to show you what, you mean, what we mean here, um, a friend of mine, well, he's a new friend. He lives in Grand Junction, Colorado, by the name of Bill Ramsey. He, um, he has a machine that picks up the sounds around, yeah. around the um, magnetic field. Uh, he covers the magnetic field of the Earth in anti-gravity waves. And when I first met him, I went to his home, and I could not uh, stand to be in his house because of the frequencies that he picked up on his machines. Besides that, he had a visual for, my, for me and it showed up like a machine that registers earthquakes. So we have, a, um, we have an insert, uh, which is audio. And I'm only going to play this for you for 60 seconds, because that's about all some of us can stand of it. Um, it starts out with, um, if maybe we could play that. And, and I promise you, it's only 60 seconds, so it won't bother you too much. It's called. Um, he, he called it noise from the universe or music. So it. This is Jupiter. This is the Pleiades in movement. That's how we picked that up on these machines. are what he calls wind harps. The, these are the things that, that control the anti-gravity and the magnetics around the Earth. And you hear 
how, how this changes. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's kind of bothering us a little bit. The reason I did that uh, for 60 seconds is to illustrate to you that there is, there is frequency and noises in, in the atmosphere and in the world at all times. Sometimes Dobermans and other dogs, they will hear a siren long before it approaches. And so some of us frequency people, subconsciously, we hear this all the time. And um, so sometimes we think we, we think we're crazy, don't we, Rose? Yes, because uh, I was talking to a lot of people and I would sit in a room and I hear these noises and no one else seemed to hear it. I've had my hearing checked. There's absolutely nothing wrong with my hearing. As a matter of fact, they, I heard everything they tested me for. But I still was hearing these sounds. And now I have other people that hear them, so I know it's normal. It's normal for us anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be quite irritating, cause tremendous headaches. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can take for the headaches. I've tried. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. You have to wait until the sound either goes down or react to it. Otherwise, you're just going to make yourself sick. Mm -hmm. um, in the early 80s, I was sick. Um, I was a sickly person as a rule anyway. And um, my symptoms and the illnesses I had didn't match. So, of course, they checked this and they checked that. And I want to talk about some of the tests they put people through. So, uh, would you care to share that? The story oh. was your chair thing there. One of the tests they put you through um, is putting you on a stool. Mm -hmm. And the stool turn, and they sit there and they turn you around and around to see which side that it may be affecting your hearing. Well, since it didn't matter which way they turned me, I always got sick because I kept hearing the sounds even though they didn't. And I would ask them to stop. That didn't work. When they made me sick enough where I was throwing up, mm -hmm. then they stopped. Uh, for a year, they had uh, my husband have me sit on the edge of the bed, and I fall back on the bed, so they said that would help me get my balance. Mm -hmm. And I told them my balance was fine, as long as I wasn't hearing the sounds, and they weren't real loud. I hear the sounds all the time. Sometimes they're really high, and sometimes they're low. When they're real low, I'm fine. When they get really, really high for me, I actually get dizzy. I have to hold on to things to keep from falling. Mm -hmm. And I moved here in 1982. Even though I heard the sounds and stuff before, it became more prominent when I moved here. Mm -hmm. And I also have a sister that's uh, been visiting here lately, and apparently they're putting her through the same test that, I'm, that I had. Mm -hmm. And I told her, they're not working. I was offered to have a surgery to decrease my hearing. Um, as a nurse, I know that's not a logical reason to do surgery. Yeah, I want to talk about that for a minute. Um, when, when, when you came, you, you was working and everything, and then what happened? Uh, they just told me that, that this is what I was having, and I said, well, if you're going to take part of my hearing as I get older, I'm going to lose it anyway. So that means I'll be deaf, and it wasn't worth the trouble. But it's my understanding you could no longer go to work? No, I it couldn't work, no. Because uh, being a nurse, you have to use a stethoscope a mm -hmm. lot. And that's, the intensity of it is really bad. Because when you're trying to hear a heartbeat through a stethoscope, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're crying most of the time because the sound is so loud to you. I cannot work with children because their heartbeats are too loud and too high. Mm -hmm. The pitch for theirs is really high. And I, I cry most of the time, so it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. So basically, I've had to give up most of my nursing, except for taking care of my mm -hmm. family or friends. And I know a lady, she sold shoes for pennies. And it got so bad where uh, she could no longer do that because she kept falling off the ladder. Yes. And, and so they told her, you know, go to the catalog cells. Of course, she didn't want to do that. Um, I, I started to talk about this a few minutes ago, like in the 80s, you know. Um, Similar to your tests, except that mine wasn't that extreme. Uh, they sent me to a psychologist. They sent me to the shrink. And then they went out of options there. So I was referred to a place called the New Life Foundation in Seattle, Washington. And when I arrived there, there was a person from seismology, uh, University of Washington, a medical doctor, and a psychic. 
and uh, one other lady, uh, uh, Jennifer James, that was her name. And, uh, and in essence, what, what ha as a result of that, what happened is they put me in a government program. And what that consisted of, you had to be fairly accurate for four months uh, before they permanently enrolled you. We were given papers to rate everything from one to 10, five being normal. So if your heart, your heart flooded, you had to wait, you know, uh, uh, wait for that day. Um, it includes uh, aches, aches and pains in your legs. Do you, do you have any yes, of those? Yes. Yeah. It's very painful yeah. sometimes. Um, heart flashes, even for even for men, you know, so yes. it, they could be mistaken for menopause, but that applies to the men. And it's, it was just a whole row of illnesses that, or symptoms that, that we had to record. And then at the end of the 30 days, we turned that in and then we were monitored of accuracy. And we found that what we were sensitive to was earthquakes, volcanoes, high tides, high winds, you know, and so we live in Washington State, so what do you do about that? Um, but at least I had an explanation, or so it seemed. Um, I have two wonderful doctors in town that's been treating me, you know, for a long time. And the problem is sometimes we don't know when to go to the doctor and when, when to go and when not to go. That's a really hard part for me because as a nurse, I have to evaluate my own symptoms to make sure that I am actually physically ill with the problem that a doctor can handle. Mm -hmm. The heat, they cannot handle. Believe me, they've given me everything. It does not work. My body overrides everything they will give me. Mm -hmm. So I've decided that I'm not going to go until I decide that I'm sick, mm -hmm. if I feel like I'm physically ill. Um, if the symptoms are something that you know that you can't have, mm -hmm. there are certain symptoms you know you cannot possibly have. Uh, in my case, I was having uh, symptoms for gallbladder. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that's not possible because my gallbladder was m removed yeah. five years ago. Mm -hmm. So I could not have those same symptoms. But I was having those again. But then I noticed talking to my friends, they were also having the same thing at the same time. Exactly. Now, what eventually, how we muddled through that is we formed a little support group. Um, we don't always meet like we plan, but you know we, we are available for each other like in the middle of the night when things get real crazy. And we kind of compare symptoms. And even at that rate, sometimes we still go to the doctor because we don't know what's wrong. And then you get there and then we have a virus and two days later it's gone again. It, it, it's almost, uh, let's talk about the top loader headache. That <laughs> we, we name everything. Do you want to explain Those that headache? The headaches that I have, um they're different from what I would consider a regular headache or a sinus mm -hmm. headache. This actually feels like someone is taking a can opener and trying to open the top of my head, which mm -hmm. you know it's not possible, mm -hmm. but the pain feels like they're using one of the old fashioned can mm -hmm. openers and just trying to slowly go around and, and cut. After that one, I thought, well, that's the worst that could happen. Well, no, the next one I had was down the middle mm -hmm. as if they're trying to open it in the center. And I know it's from sound because while they were playing the sound here a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. it started again. So I'm having it now mm -hmm. from the top of my head. I really have to apologize for that, but that's the only way we could explain to the people. I was expecting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, but you probably didn't. I didn't want to play it for you twice. That was the whole thing. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank so you. So thanks for letting me get away um, with this one time. Um, the, on the top loader, I had a headache earlier, you know, in the, during the week. And to me, it, it reminded me of an old VCR that had the top loader and because my head was here and then there was nothing and then the rest of my head was, was that, there and yes. that was the part that was hurting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even though you know it's not your head, it's at the top, but it's like it's approximately five inches above your actual physical head. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. But the pain is still there. And it's not a physical pain that the doctors can give you something for. Mm -hmm. You have to wait yourself, you know, and go through it. And my husband has looked at me a couple of times when I've had these headaches. And he said, I appear, I appear to be drugged to him around the exactly. eyes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he says, you look like you're in, which is not possible for me because I'm, 
highly sensitive to medications. Yeah, we are both drug free. I want I want to state that right here now. Oh yes, uh, yeah. believe me, I have to be. Yeah. Because of a medical problem that I have, I cannot take drugs anyway unless mm -hmm. I'm supervised by a doctor and I'd have to be in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So it's not something I take without a doctor's permission. But the pain is, now that I have an explanation for the pain, it makes me feel normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we do call each other and, and when we fall over, like I get... I kind of fall over. No, I didn't, don't really fall over, but I could if I wanted to, <laughs> to the right, and that's usually a volcano. And you, you see what happens is, it's not, anytime there is earth movement, and, and if, if I appear to be slowing down, I have to, you know, pull that up and see where I'm going with this. It's like, when you have earth movement like this, it sends frequency, high or low, into the atmosphere, and it's that's what we pick up, okay? So in the meantime, I had had a handle on that pretty good. In the meantime, I'm going to Anchorage, Alaska, and you hear me talking about Anchorage very often. I got there at 5 o'clock one, one evening, and um, it was a non-smoking house. So of course, I respect that. It's 20 below outside, so I'm going outside to smoke, so I was very irritated because I allowed myself to put myself in that situation in the first place. And I got very, very ugly, um, and verbally ugly with my host, <laughs> bless her heart, you know. Now the next day, my friend Monica and I, we was at Denny's smoking, and the same thing happened. And the third day, um, I was at the Adam Center ready to give a lecture, and I was talking to a lady in a wheelchair, you know, sweet little lady. And all of a sudden, it's, I could feel myself coming out of my chair, and I caught it. It's like, what are you doing? And I said, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. So I did, and I realized that something had moved me to get up. I actually wanted to choke her. Okay? So then, when I came out of the bathroom after you know, I got myself together, I said, what happens here at 5 o'clock? Well, the locals, of course, they were used to whatever it was, so they didn't um, really pay too much attention to it. But eventually, it turned out to be Project Harp. So since I can't use all these big words, I had asked you to be nice enough to summarize what Project Harp is. Uh, Project Harp is, it's spelled H-A-A-R-P, mm -hmm. but it stands for High Frequency Active Auroral Research Project in Alaska. It's about 200 miles away from uh, Anchorage. Mm -hmm. And it's a sound that, uh, it makes a sound that we can pick up. It's very irritating. And the one thing I noticed about it, it makes me very angry when I hear it. Just like what happened um, to me, yeah. I'm argumentative. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not normally a violent person, but that's what I feel like doing at the time. And when I'm home alone, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I can scream and yell and do what I want, but when there's other people around, it's very hard. And my husband does not understand why I get that way sometime, and I says, well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like somebody is controlling you with the sound. Mm -hmm. And that's the one I really don't like the most. The pain I can deal with, but the anger that's there. Mm -hmm. And you have to project it towards somebody. So the best thing to do is remove yourself from the situation, mm -hmm. especially if you're around a group. Mm -hmm. And I wonder about parents that have this, that have small children, with their voice, their little voices irritate you. I hadn't thought of that. I have seven grandchildren. Let me see. That the, the younger mm -hmm. children, usually around three and under, have these little screechy mm -hmm. voices. Mm -hmm. And they would irritate the parents because I don't... I don't have any small children around, but mm -hmm. I can imagine at the time when I'm hearing this, what's going on. That's and we a good get point, it, yeah. We get it really early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that, if the parents are picking that up when they're getting the kids ready for school and stuff like that. In essence, what it creates, I believe, is, here we go, it's radio magnetic smog. It, yes. It, it's, it, it, it gives away garbage, you know? It, and, and um, it envelopes you in it. Exactly, yeah. And then there was Project Woodpecker. 
uh, that is why in our neighborhood down yes. here in Oregon, that originates in Russia, and we do know that that has caused birth defects. You know, just a, must sound like a laser to create birth defects. That's uh, that one causes muscular jerks for me. Mm -hmm. It's like um, like there's a nerve in there just jerking, mm -hmm. and that one I've noticed. I don't like that one either, but you can cover that one a little bit. It's not as painful. Mm -hmm. There is a book by uh, Jean Manning. It's called Angels Don't Play This Harp, and it, it explains the harp project in detail. Unfortunately, uh, my copy is in my RV, and um, my landlord insisted that the RV couldn't live there, so I had to take it and t find a new home for it. And the book is in my RV, but you might want to go to a bookstore. If that's of interest, it's real technical, you know. That's why I was trying to break it down so people could understand it. But the name of that is Angels Don't Play This Harp. So, so when you go to the doctor, um, do they usually ask you, uh, like in my case, uh, what are we having today, earthquake or? No, they never <laughs> mention that. They always look for, first they look for a physical problem mm -hmm. and if they can't find one, it's always a mental problem. Well, I've had enough nursing now and enough nursing experience to know that everything can't be a mental problem. Mm -hmm. And the first time I was told to go to a psychiatrist was um, because the doctor told me I was in pain. Well, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to let the, him convince me I was in pain when I wasn't. And he says, I needed to go to a psychiatrist for that. And I simply told him he was nuts if he thought I was going to go to a psychiatrist to feel pain. Mm -hmm. Pain to me is not necessary. So exactly, why do I yeah. want to feel it? I'm having enough now with the headaches that they can't handle the noises, the sounds. So why do I want to feel more pain? Like I said, my doctors are very understanding. They have treated me for 16 years. And I remember one time I was on a treadmill, you know, for one of those tests. And I, I did one of my kind of left, left tilt tests, yeah. Yes. And, um, and, it, and I told the doctor, I said, oh, earthquake. And he told the nurse, turn it off. We, we know what's wrong. So, so I guess. They, they jokingly call us our, their frequency people, you know, and that's, of course, what we refer to them also. Now, I don't know if that happens to you or not, but I can sit here and talk, and all of a sudden, in some way, it feels like I'm falling off the chair yes. and I try to catch myself. It's a slight dizziness. Mine, mm -hmm. um, most of the time, is to the right, mm -hmm. and I've noticed that, and I know how to, make, how to compensate for that, because if you, don't, if you don't learn to compensate, you will fall. That's a good point. So how, how do we compensate? So if mine, since mine is on the right, I will automatically tilt to the left. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going straight because I've checked it in a mirror to mm -hmm. test it so that I know I'm walking straight, even though I don't feel like it. I feel like I'm about to fall over, like one leg is about six or eight inches shorter than the mm -hmm. other, like I'm going to tilt over. But for a couple of years, I would actually hold on to things mm -hmm. because I didn't understand it. And I thought it was a middle ear imbalance. That's mm -hmm. what I thought it was. And I found out it wasn't that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with our ears. And going to the doctor is not going to help. Yeah, but late at night, your heart starts racing. And the first thing you do, you panic. Anytime you have a little discrepancy in your heart, it panics you. So when do you do? When do you go? When, you don't, you, when don't you go? Um, I noticed the heat first because I used to get the heat and it's almost like a crown right around uh, my hairline. Mm -hmm. I get that and it's, it goes in through my entire body. So it's not, it can't be um, diagnosed as hot flashes or something mm -hmm. like that because I know the difference. Beside that, hot flashes doesn't usually start at the knees or at the feet. And during the middle of the night, we do not get enough sleep for the simple reason exactly. we, we'll get, we'll get real hot. And it's almost like our heart speed up for two or three beats, then it'll stop for a beat. Mm -hmm. And then you panic because you wake, it Ex wakes you up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I found out the best thing is not to get up. Because if I you get that, up, you I will fall too. every time. Yeah. And I found out that's the only time I will fall out of bed if I try to get up real quick. So the best thing to do is either lie there or sit on the side of the bed. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary because I've gotten up, panicked a little bit, and got up and 
walked into the dresser and the chest of drawer, could not find my way around my room. Mm -hmm. And the safest thing for anybody is to stay in bed. Uh, sometimes I get a little panicky and then I'm thinking, what do I do, what do I do? I'm just going to go to sleep for a few minutes and see what happens. And by the time I wake up, it's the gone. crisis is over again. Now, by the time uh, this, this show airs, um, the blue moon eclipse is probably done. I don't know, was she aware of that or not? We no. have a, on the 30th of January, we have a blue moon eclipse, meaning a blue moon is the second moon the second full moon of the month. And it's also an eclipse. Uh, I'm not sure if it's full or not, but I would think so the 30th today, um, I figure we're gonna start feeling weird again in a couple of days. I, I, I would think so. But not to panic, you know, we always get no. through it. Uh, driving, it. driving, you wanna share what it does to our driving? Actually, my driving isn't too bad. It just, you have to focus on what you're doing when you're driving. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to give it your total attention. Because if you think you're falling over when you're driving, it can be really bad. Mm -hmm. And the, for most people will tilt toward one way or the other, mm -hmm. and luckily mine's is to the right. Because if it's to the left, you have to be really careful. Because a lot of the cars now have their, um, the opening for your door. It's mm -hmm. on that side. You can lean over to that side and you will fall out of your car. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is always get in your car and lock the door so that you can't just open the door and fall out. Because mm -hmm. if you tilt that way, you will fall out. I have days that uh, when I'm a little unsure of myself, I don't drive at all. Because on uh, occasions that uh, it feels like the wheels are like two inches off the ground and like you're on that yes. black ice. And uh, living in Washington, we know what black ice is. Now the people in uh, uh, the fence in, in Anchorage know, you know what, what icy conditions are. And I'm sure that can, the friends in Canyon City uh, know that. But it just feels like you're sliding on the ice sideways, except you know it's in the middle of the summer. So your wheels are actually, just off the ground. Actually, it reminds me of um, if I was a pilot, I would be starting to go up in a plane where the wheels aren't there, it's just that I'm just about ready to take off in a plane. Yeah, that's a good way to and describe it's, it. It's very uncomfortable and it's unnerving. Mm -hmm. And generally I try to stay home or have somebody else drive. Yeah, have, yeah we should have enough sense to say, hey, um, I just can't go today or um, I need to take the day off. And, and, and that's what makes it so hard when you have a nine to five job. It is. Uh, you know, it, it, it's like, it's like helping Mother Earth give birth, you know? It's like it starts here and then you get to the peak, you think, and then it normalizes and then it comes back up. And then when the event is over, it's almost like you, you have given birth and you just want to go and to sleep. Tired. You know, you're just it tired, makes you boom, so just tired. good night, go to sleep. Because mm -hmm. I'm a very good cook, but on those days, I'm, I think I'm the worst cook in the world then. Mm -hmm. I burn things, I don't know how to measure, and I never measure food. Mm -hmm. I just cook by know-how, but there's days I can't even cook simple things. Mm -hmm. And I try real hard and I concentrate on it. And it's so much work just to concentrate on what you're doing. Now, this is a little out of left field, but I wanna ask about that. This, this new disease that they have uh, diagnosed fibromyalgia. Yes, fibromyalgia. Uh, by you being in the medical field, do, do you think that some of that could be mistaken to some extent? Yes, that is, because it's a lot of, um, you have a lot of aches and pains. Mm -hmm. But when the doctors are looking for symptoms, they're looking for something to zero in for mm -hmm. a diagnosis. With this, it's very difficult to come up with a diagnosis. Because yeah, exactly. you have aches, you have a backache, a headache, your neck mm -hmm. aches. But it's nothing that they can put together. And it's nothing that they can give you that really works to help it. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things I think in the medical field that people are being diagnosed with that has nothing to do with the actual disease itself. I think it has to do with the frequency. Yeah, I, you know, to get back to the theme, uh, we just kind of pick into things here to make uh, to give some kind of perspective, and I think you're absolutely right. You know, they have to give it a name. So, 
sometimes they call it a virus because the virus lasts a few days and then it'll go away. Now, uh, to get back to HARP, we got a little sidetracked here. Was there anything else in your notes that might be important that we left out? Uh, I think people should start keeping a journal, especially with HARP, and come up with a time mm -hmm. that they're feeling this mm -hmm. and talk to other people because their friends may be doing the same thing. But the, the violence part of it, I have no idea what we're going to be able to do about that. Mm -hmm. I just know that I'm not a violent person. And when I pick that up, I, I'm very, very unnerving. Now, down here on Martin Way, there is some new towers or something. I, I saw antennas of some kind of radio antennas. Uh, um, and they want to build a new satellite. I believe it's a satellite in the Vanier area for cell phones. Um, that's going to affect it's us, It's going to make it a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Do you have trouble with cell phones? Uh, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, mine's, um, it's like somebody scraping the back of my head with mm -hmm. a sharp instrument when I... Uh, when I'm close around those towers. The electrical ones is usually my back. Mm -hmm. And it feels like um, a sidewalk burn. That's what it feels like. If, if anybody's ever fallen on a sidewalk when oh, they were yeah. kids mm -hmm. and they get scraped, that's what it feels like, a burn. And it's very uncomfortable. But at least when you're passing those, you can at least drive by them and pass through and get it over with. It's, and it doesn't last as long as some of the other frequencies. Um, I took some classes here at the TV station, and one of the things that that we did, uh, we were shown how to use a camera, you know. And when you use a camera, you have a headset on, on your head, and then the director tells you, go left, go here, do this, do that. And um, it, I only did this like for 15 minutes, and. I was very uncomfortable, and when I took that headphone off, I was not myself for several hours. I couldn't, I couldn't stand it, just having things intensified in my ear, you know? I can't have things in my ear or anything like that, which I really don't like, and that's bad if you're a nurse, because you always get the stethoscope in your ear most mm -hmm. of the time. Uh, there's a, one other home item that people may have um, that causes the same thing. The little... Um, they're called pestronics of some kind. And they're plugged in, and they make sound to keep animals and stuff away from your house. Oh, yeah. Uh, those I'm able to pick up uh, because we, have an we don't own animals ourselves, but mm -hmm. uh, our neighbors do, and they hang around the house all the time. And this will keep them from you know, knocking your garbage cans and stuff like that over. Uh, one day, my husband had ours connected, and I was away from the house at the time. And he knows he has to disconnect it before I come home. Mm -hmm. It caused terrible headaches. So I reminded him, I called him and reminded him to disconnect it so that, uh, because our son was coming over. Well, he forgot. And within 15 minutes of being in our house, our son had a real bad headache. Yeah, your son is affected y yes. quite a bit too. Mm -hmm. So I asked him about it, and he says, oh, I forgot. Mm -hmm. I said, but you can't forget these things because it, it makes us physically ill. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, it's not a l little minor headache. These are really painful headaches. Mm -hmm. Now let's flip it for a minute here. So we, we've kind of, in, in a very simple way, tried to show you what, what noises can do to some of us. But at, at the same token here, um, we interfere with electrical appliances. Yes, we do. Uh, it's a flip We're, side. Well, for right now, mine's just the light bulbs. And yeah. I'm no, I know you do the same thing all the I time. I sure do. <laughs> we could buy stock in, the, mm -hmm. in that market. Um, I've had uh, light bulbs that supposed to last two years. Mm -hmm. uh, one lasts three days. Mm -hmm. That can get very expensive. But we're always changing light bulbs because we blow them out. Um, I had an experience over the Christmas holidays where uh, interfered with the TV. Mm -hmm. um, it was strange because I interfered with the TV, but I didn't interfere with the VCR, so the VCR didn't change. But sometimes there's just a little difference in frequency, you know. Between the TV I mean, and the VCR. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like I can hear things, I can hear flies come down the hallway, but because uh, my background in, um, as a DJ, you know, in, in, in nightclub type settings and bands, the frequency on the TV, I believe, is a little lower uh, than the fly probably. 
and the only thing I cannot hear is the TV uh, because it has a frequency. Now, we have a mutual acquaintance. Uh, he's on a paper. I'm not going to name any names. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember who that yes. is? Mm -hmm. And uh, he would get really tired if he had worked all day and his voice would change frequencies. And I would have to say to him, uh, like I did to you earlier, you know, when we first started, I said, I'm hard of hearing, it can in a joking matter, because when you change the frequency in your voice, it changes, it changes the sound and you that can't you hear it. Mm -hmm. And he would just change his voice and I couldn't understand him at all. Same person, you know. Uh, now I have that because I have, uh, I can get different sounds from different sides. Because my right side, I get a different sound, I can get another sound from my left. Mm -hmm. Also get radio static a lot. And I turn as if, almost like I'm trying to adjust the dial with mm -hmm. the radio static. And I can get uh, different, different sounds that way where I can get uh, maybe the radio sounds from the right, but I won't get it on the left. Mm -hmm. Now that was, that was odd for me. But I'm getting used to the different sounds. Um, I know I have to live with it. That's the key to the whole thing. One of my doctors at one time told me, he said, uh, uh, the only way you're going to get any better, I suggest you move off the planet. And the next time, the next time I have to go there, I'm going to take that, that clip, that tape that we played for the friends here, I'm going to play that for him and I tell him so. <laughs> well, that's what it sounds like off planet now. Yes. What? Mm -hmm. And here in, um, there's a lot of other things that we hear that we don't have a handle on mm -hmm. what it's called. Now, I can be in an elevator and I can hear the electricity running through the wires, which irritates me. Mm -hmm. And I prefer to walk, unless it's like 10 or 12 stories and I'm not going to walk. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the sound irritates me. The sound of a light bulb, sometimes you can mm -hmm. actually hear. hear it. And most people, that's not something most people pay attention to. Mm -hmm. But if you're home alone and you're just sitting there reading and you're hearing these sounds come from the light bulb. Sounds pretty loony to some people, I'm uh, sure. Yes, it does. But I'm wondering how many people are diagnosed with other things or even in exactly. possibly in institutions yeah. because of it. Because they're saying they hear things. Yeah, so I, you know, I don't know about you, but I offer my time to... Um, just talk it out because sometimes that's all we can do is talk it out, you know. And like the man said, unless you move off the planet, and that doesn't mean it's going to get any better. We do have to function. Uh, some people have, hus your husband is understanding yes, most of the time. Yes, mm -hmm. but we're very lucky being adults. I just exactly. wonder what happens with the teenagers now mm -hmm. that have these sounds and have nobody to talk to. Exactly, you know, because sound can also be used for mind control. Yes. It really, really can. And then you hear these ugly things, these uh, the young children, the shootings, and you just wonder, you know, what made him go off like that? Because they have Could nobody to talk squeaking? to and they don't, they mm -hmm. don't hear about these things. Mm -hmm. Where if they had somebody that they could just talk to sometime and find out that maybe it's their friends are doing the same thing. Yeah. So I was, I, I consider myself, myself very lucky since I met you, because I understand mm -hmm. things a lot more. And since I have no intention of leaving this planet right now, mm -hmm. I know I have to live with it. Mm -hmm. If you um, could have the friends walk away with anything, uh, a, a message of type, what would, what would you like it to be? And, and now, now, now keep in mind, we in, we in different places. Oh. Um, Tell me again about the relatives that came from, they came from where? California. From California. Uh, and we were, I let her read an article and her husband came up with the idea and he says, that's the same thing my, uh, they're testing my sister for. Mm -hmm. Her hearing since, I don't know why coming from California to Washington makes mm -hmm. a difference. But I came from California originally too, mm -hmm. in 1982. So she's being tested for all these different things and they're doing the same test that they did for me. Exactly, because it's not really just in one area. It, it's because it goes into the atmosphere. It, it, it just, it's just, you pick it's it up. It's all over. And it's I picked over. up, mm -hmm. um, we were on a trip in Arizona and I was picking up a lot of different sounds there. Mm -hmm. Being, you know, going in through the mountains and everything. Mm -hmm. And some areas I couldn't wait to get out of. I would get so sick just being in there. 
And my husband says, how can you get dizzy sitting down? Well, to most people, you don't. You only get dizzy when you stand up, but this, I still hear the sound. Yeah. So I get dizzy sitting down. So the best advice uh, we can really give people is, is compare notes, call your friends, see what's yes. out there. Um, how do you feel? Uh, why do you think you feel that way? Is it a, is it a bug? Is it a, just anything, just compare notes. Because Try to talk to people more about it because if you do, you'll find out some of your friends are having mm -hmm. headaches. A lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the people that you think are around you, what about your children? Are they having headaches the same time you do? Mm -hmm. Hands, you know, uh, sometimes I have pants, uh, pain in my hands, like all of a sudden I came down with arthritis or something. Just anything out of the ordinary, just call the friends, you know, and, and with the medical insurance the way it is. And here again, we're not saying do not go to the doctor. Um, oh, yeah, I think they should go because to Because to me sometimes, you know, I don't go to the doctor thinking I'm a, on one of my frequency trips. And then it says, well, hey, why did you wait so long, you know? Now, they should check with their doctors mm -hmm. first. Yeah. But if you're having something with frequency, a lot of people around you that have sensitive hearing will have the same thing. Exactly. And the baby that's screaming, for all we know, could have the same thing. Yes, the same thing, exactly, yeah. But at least talk to people. Mm -hmm. Go to the doctor first, have him check you out. If he can't find anything, mm -hmm. start writing it down, and please start keeping a journal. Yeah, and call me. That's maybe really I'll, important. Maybe we can read the papers. We can talk it out. Mm -hmm. Find out if there's hurricanes or earthquakes <coughs> or something Excuse somewhere me. that that you may be picking up. The, the, the web, the web, the, you know, they have good yeah, websites. Yeah, on the internet is um, very good for for earthquakes and and things of that sort. I have to get back to um, Bill Ramsey for a minute. I'm in touch with him when things get real crazy. Um, he usually keeps me posted on what it physically registers because, you know, we do have ways of, of monitoring this now. And he has promised to come and be a guest um, here shortly when the, when the weather gets a little better. Um, the electrical wires outside of my house, um, I took a picture of Mount Rainier, I filmed one of those scalar waves on Mount Rainier, and I noticed visibly they were leaking. I picked it up with the video. And so it's just a lot of things out there. And again, I want to recommend that book, Angels Don't Play This Harp. Is there anything, any a book or anything you like to recommend? Um, mm, not the ones I'm reading right now. Most of them um, have to do with other subjects mm -hmm. that I'm trying to find out more information about. I think people should use their library, find out information. Mm -hmm. If you don't know anybody, get to call the show mm -hmm. and find out what's going on and that uh, we might be able to pass along information to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so in our own way, we just, we just research as we go from, from one poll or yes. study to the next and so on and so on. No matter how, how minute or minor it seems to you, you know, share it and we can broaden this network that we have, um, trying to help one another, you know. And uh, it's, It'll be good. It's mm -hmm. good to talk to other people and find out this, even, with, even the small things. Because if you start with the small things, when the big ones come along, you'll have more information. Mm -hmm. Because the sound is not going down, it's getting louder. I believe Hop was down for a little while, and um, I believe we did feel a little better oh, yes, temporarily, we did. and then they, it got all cranked up again. We were getting mm -hmm. excited there for a minute. We thought we were being normal. <laughs> and and uh, radio magnetic smog does hurt people, and non-lethal weapons do hurt people. Yes, they do. And uh, and that heat that uh, that we're generating, it's called electromagnetic heat. Mm -hmm. And it can get pretty intense. You can fog up your own glasses. Yes, you do. Because I have done that. And you say, ooh, and people look at you and they, they think, how come, what is she doing? And it, it's just, you just to, fog up your own glasses. To get people to understand what it feels like, it's like um, coming into a cold room and having your oven on and open your oven door. Exactly. And it fogs up your glasses. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like when we have this intense heat. And it comes from your eyeballs, right? Yes. Yeah. It does. It's real. It. 
it's odd at first, and you use it. We we laugh about it now yeah. because now we understand it. But at first, it gets a little scary. Yeah, I always try to tell the friends it doesn't really matter what goes on there. One of the main things is you have to laugh. You know, you need one good laugh a day because it's healing and. And I mean, what else are you going to do? You just have you to just laugh. You can't take it too serious mm -hmm. because it's not going away. Mm -hmm. So we are classified as weird. Yes, strange. strange. Um, a lot of the machines uh, won't pick up some of the things we do, mm -hmm. but we can pick up a lot of sound from the machines that could irritate sure us. Sure, I can. Mm -hmm. And um, most people that can go to a dance or something, they feel great. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't work that way for us because mm -hmm. the sound and uh, from coming from some of the music is so loud for us. Yeah, well, that's why we meet at five o'clock, and by seven o'clock we're out of there. Oh yes. Yeah. We're not we're not ones to hang around. So if you want to invite us, it's easy. It, it's <laughs> it's early or not at all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And be compassionate with your fellow human being, uh, especially if they don't know what's going on in their body or their ears. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I would ask the, some of the people that pass you along the street with the music that you can hear a block away, mm -hmm. um, be a little gentle with us because the way you, it sounds in your car is not the way it sounds to us mm -hmm. because it's really, really loud. It's very painful. And we're not into any more pain than we have to tolerate. But all in all, your life has been a little easier since since you've been part of the support group? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It made it a lot easier. Because now when there's something come up, I can call friends first. Mm -hmm. If nobody's having anything, I say, well, maybe that's a medical problem. Exactly. And then I can go in. But if we're all having the same problem and the same pain in the same area, mm -hmm. then I know it's a frequency problem. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Yeah, I know. It's not <laughs> something to celebrate. Ah. I know. But it's, it's good to know that you're not physically ill and that you're not mentally ill. Because generally people will say mental illness if they can't find a physical reason for something. Yeah, it's called psychosomatic. Yes, I don't believe in that. I've been told that so much till I got to the point when everybody would make me angry about something. That's what I would tell mm -hmm. them. I said, yeah, the leak coming from uh, the water coming down in the middle of my flow is psychosomatic. So if you want to fix it before it costs you a fortune, you come and look at it. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. They said, oh, you can't leak. You're from a two-story house. I said, well, there's bathrooms, there's sinks upstairs, yeah. there's washer, dryers. Why couldn't it leak? No. I said, well, it's going to cost you a lot of money to fix that psychosomatic illness I have. I cook by sound, you know. I can, I can tell when my rice is done and when the potatoes are done. And Yes, um, that's the way I cook. Mm -hmm. Except when I have the frequency that's really bad, mm -hmm. then I burn everything. But that's a little weird what you say. I mean, to other people it would yeah, be. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. But I can hear a lot of things, and my, my husband thinks it's really odd mm -hmm. because he goes and check everything that I say. Maybe he's jealous. No, I won't <laughs> think anybody should be jealous of something like that. I, I know, that's the point I was trying to make. You <laughs> because know, you when, don't, if he said uh, it's bad enough when my son and I can hear yeah. uh, snow hit the window pane, and he says, exactly. how can you hear that? I says, it crackles when it hits the window mm -hmm. pane. And he says, I don't believe it. So he goes up and check and he says, <laughs> oh, it is snowing out. Yeah. I didn't have to get up to go and find out. I could hear it. So I, I guess we kind of told you some of the strange things that happened during these frequency changes. And again, you can take sounds for, for pleasure. What's the other word I'm looking for? For? Euphoria. Hmm? It's euphoric, some of the sounds that you get. Yeah, that's not what I was looking for. I have such problems with words. It's, it's a pro and a con. It's, you have a pro and a, you know, the pro and a con for, Mine, for it's, frequencies. It's either one or the other. Yeah. And, and so I would really encourage all the friends, regardless of where you live, uh, you know, just kind of be supportive and... Um, uh, talk about these things. Uh, get books. Go to the internet. And husbands, be a little gentle with your wives. Exactly. A little understanding because it seems to be more female, I've noticed, than males that I've noticed in mm -hmm. this area. 
Well, just in case it isn't, so let's go the other way too. Wives be more. They can be more gentle with be the husbands too. Be gentle with the husbands, so. Mm -hmm. And they, you'll be able to tell because if you write it down in the journal, it'll become a pattern, and you'll see the pattern mm -hmm. from it. I would think it would take several months um, to get that fairly well established. You know. Uh, it took me from. Um, I think I started in 1994. And I started the journal in 95, mm -hmm. and I can look back in my journal now and see that how, what I was feeling like because I would write it down, and then the next day I said, oh, earthquake. Exactly. You, you, you get so where you can just go along and do something, and you know exactly you know, what the, uh, that t It what took me about two or three years to get mm -hmm. that pattern yeah. down. But I didn't have all the information that uh, people are having now because they mm -hmm. have like this program. Yeah. There are books and stuff out that mm -hmm. they can look for. And it's little things that they can start with. Okay. Our time has come to an end, Rose. I, you were a wonderful guest and I thank you very much. And I hope you come and visit us again. I will. Um, Maybe we can master and, and show people how we blow light bulbs one day. Right now, we're not oh, that skilled yet. I don't think we want to do that in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in here, but you know, in, in, in general. Again, uh, be good to yourself. Um, love your fellow man. And just use your sense of humor. And what else? Anything you want to add? Come back and visit us next time. Yeah, you come and visit us again next time. So. And thank you for having me, Lillian. Oh, it's, it's, it's just great. You know, you just kind of dropped in my life. And one morning, and there you was with that silver cord. And, <laughs> and, and you're still there. Yeah.